does verse number one. It's the Gospel according to Luke, 11th chapter. Um, I know the media is team is ready to go through all 13 verses. You know what? Just in case I missed something along the way, which I am prone to do, let's go on and read all 13 verses. I'm going to read in your hearing. Amen. It's going to give us a little bit more information, insight before we get into God's word. The Bible says, one day Jesus was praying in a certain city. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. Just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. For it says, forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. Verse 5 said, then Jesus said to them, suppose you have a friend. And you go to him at night, at midnight brother, and say, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. Verse 8 says, I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, King James said, because of his importunity, he will rise. He will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask. Look at somebody say, ask. ask. And it will be given to you, seek. Tell somebody, seek. seek. And you will find, tell somebody, knock. knock. Knock and the door will be open to you. Verse 10, for everyone, someone say, everyone. everyone. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And the one who knocks, the door will be open. Verse 11, which of your fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you did, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask you? Let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come humbly before you on this morning, knowing that God without you we can do nothing. But through you, all things are possible. Lord, this morning we ask you to teach us about this principle of prayer. Instruct us regarding the power of prayer. Bring us into a more enlightened state so we will know exactly how to pray effectively. Yes. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. 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 Sing and pray the Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want to talk, we're in a series, and the series is Har The Harvesting Church. And this morning I'm going to talk about praying prayers that get results, part two. If you were here on last Wednesday night, we dealt with praying prayers that get results 
And I'm going to call that now that we're dealing with part two. I'm going to call that part one. But we're dealing with part two on this morning. If there is one thing the disciple of Christ want to learn, that is, they want to know how, they want to learn how to pray. And they want to learn how to pray in order for them to receive or get results. Amen? Amen. Many people pray in a variety of different ways. And the reason I say that is because being that we are so uniquely made, God made me completely different than he made you. He created you to be somebody different. We don't have the same complete DNA. We're not this, we don't have the same mannerisms. We don't have the same facial expressions. We're all unique individuals. And so because God made us, somebody say God made us. God made us. He also made a prayer life for us to be at times different. Amen. Some people pray while they're standing. Some people pray while they're kneeling. Some people pray while they're walking. Some people pray while they are running. Some people pray while they're driving. Some people pray while they're sitting silently. Some people pray loudly and openly. And again, there are some that pray silently. And when it comes to prayer, there is no right or wrong way to reach the throne room of heaven. Are y'all here? Praise the Lord. Now with that we have to understand being that maybe say for instance I've been in this walk for a little while I can't point a finger at you and say you don't know how to pray. I can't point a finger at you and say you're not praying effectively with your silence. Are y'all okay? The truth of the matter is, because God knows the things that we have need of before we ask according to Matthew 6, verse number 8, and because he hears our cries, the cries of the humble that is according to Psalm 92, verse number 12, there are many different ways, many different ways to make certain that our Heavenly Father hears our prayers. And that is exactly what the disciples of Jesus wanted to know. And here it is. When it comes to the disciples of Jesus, they said, according to the scriptures, it was after they saw him praying. After he got up, they said, Lord, teach us how to pray. Because again, if a disciple wants a strong connection to be in sync with God, he or she wants to know how to pray. If a disciple wants to be satisfied by God, he or she again wants to know how to pray. If a person is going to have satisfaction in their life with Christ, I would just about submit and say it's because they have a prayer life yes. with Christ. Yes. So this morning, I want to speak a word of life into each of your hearts. And this word is not going to only educate you about prayer. It's not going to only cause you to become more earnest about prayer, which means that you want to become more serious about prayer. But more importantly, it's going to cause you to become more effective. Yeah. Somebody say effective, effective in your prayers. Yeah. The Bible says again that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man yeah. availeth much. Yeah. 
Amen. Amen. So we're talking about prayers or praying prayers that get us results. Everybody wants results. There is nothing at all I do in my life that I don't want results from. Everybody wants results. The child sitting in the classroom that's paying attention to what the teacher is teaching, the reason that they do that is because at the end of the day, or when test-taking time comes, they want results from what they've listened to. Are you here? The husband that works diligently on behalf of the family to make sure that the family is safe and secure, that man wants results. That's the reason why he go to work. He wants, he wants a paycheck. He wants a payoff. Yes. He wants results. Yes. The wife that works alongside of the children, while you understand, and they're growing up, learning how to become more developed educationally and academically, she is looking for that child. After she's poured in to become the child that she wants that child to be, She's looking for results. Everybody wants results. As I serve Christ, I don't want, Paul said it like this, he don't, we don't want our labor to be in, oh y'all, you hear what I'm saying? In other words, we want results. Are y'all here today? Well, we are no different than church, the disciples. The disciples saw Jesus praying. And because of something that evidently they saw in him that was not a part of them, they asked the question, or they asked him, Lord, teach us how to pray. So they knew that's a good place because see, they knew that Jesus' prayers were effective. Maybe they seen him perform miracles. Maybe they saw some signs and some wonders. Or maybe they just saw a different lifestyle that he carried that they did not carry. But they knew that there was something different. Are y'all here? Praise the Lord. I want to submit before I go any further church that every person in here, you want to learn how to pray. You want to learn this principle and the power of this principle, you want to learn how to pray. See, anything worth learning might take you a little while. Every last one of our students that go to school, they don't just get in there learning algebra. They build upon the basic fundamentals of mathematics in order for them to get to where they need to go. Are you hearing me what I'm saying? And it's because of what they learn, basic knowledge, to learn what they learn down here, that causes them to elevate. So I say elevate. elevate. Go up to a higher level of learning because they learn the skills necessary down here, which they build upon in order for them to get where? Up here. Amen? And so the prayer is the same. It's no different. It's the same. And so these disciples of Jesus said, Master, Lord, teach us how to pray. Because again, they want results in their lives. See, results happen, church, over a series of consequences of actions. Certain actions move you into a place of results based on the prior or previous actions. It's because of what you've done that caused you to get to where you are. It's because of what you did not do that caused you to be where you are. Because it's the result, the, the total sum in other words, of our lives is based upon all of the things we've done in our past. Now, a lot of times we don't like to believe that, 
But the truth of the matter is, it is what it is. Everything that I've done, the good, the bad, and the ugly, has gotten me to this place in my life right now. I wish I could go back and erase something, but the truth of the matter is, it is what it is. Are y'all here? Praise the Lord. And so now when you start looking at Jesus, he, 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 the, the disciples say, Master, Lord, teach us how to pray. So prayer, church, and people praying and getting results from their prayers has never been outside of the scope of God. Every person in here. And I'm going to say that again with emphasis. Every person in here that want results from their lives as they pray before God can receive it. Yes. It was people like Abram or Abraham over in Genesis the 20th chapter, verse number 17. The Bible says, and Abraham prayed unto God and God healed Abimelech and his wife and his maidservants and they bare children. Now, just think about this. Here is a man that God chose to be the father of faith, or the father of the faithful. Abimelech and his wife, church, they were not able to bear children, if you know anything about the story. The story is when, when, when God told Abraham to leave that, that land of his, and he began to lie over the fact that this woman that he was with, Sarah, was not his wife, but it was his sister. And because of that, because now when he got over there, Abimelech, King Abimelech and his wife, God saw what had happened. Abimelech had some kind of a relationship with God evidently, because it was at this point, church, that God says, well, well Abimelech rather says, he said, look God, he told me that that was his sister and I went after her. Yes. But it was a lie. He said, I did it out of my integrity. But though, although that was the case, God sealed up the womb of Abimelech's wife. Yes. But because of one man's prayer, the Bible says that they bore children. That's how powerful prayer can be in an individual's life. Now a lot of times people don't believe that if I focus my attention on God and strategically focus my uh, prayer towards God on a certain thing, that God will not deliver, but God will deliver, praise the Lord. Also in Numbers, the 11th chapter, verse number 1 and verse number 2. In this particular area here, church, the people of God were complaining. Moses was leading the children of Israel out of Egyptian bondage. They were on their way where God wanted them to go, praise the Lord. And the Bible says in Numbers, the 11th chapter, verse number 1, that God was displeased. When God get displeased about something in a person's life, it kind of kind of ties the, the hand of God up. Are y'all here? Praise the Lord. Because God wants us to be a people that completely give themselves to Him. Yes. But the Bible says in verse number two, when the people cried out to Moses, the Bible says he prayed to the Lord, and the fire died down. Are y'all here? And so here it is again, the leader of the pack, if you will. Though the people of God were complaining against God, here it is, God says, then I would know Moses, all you have to do is pray a prayer, and because I'm going to hear you, the Bible says the fire died down. People that were in the midst of that city, church, they were consumed. But then one man, somebody say one man. One man, one man prayed a prayer and things changed. Are you all here, church? That ought to be something that would cause us to be edified and built up as to why I need to pray more effectively. Amen? See, think about it like this. See, people don't believe that God will really hear their cries. And because of this, people don't pray. 
But whenever you understand that, you understand that, that God will hear you, you will begin to open up your mouth with boldness and begin to pray. Praise the Lord. There was another man that all of us are familiar with. And he found in Matthew the 26th chapter, over there in verse number 20, I'm sorry, 39, 42, and verse number 41, Jesus. The Bible said that when he was about to go to the place called the skull, that's called Golgotha's Hill. That's when he was about to be crucified. Are y'all here? And so before he went there, he had to settle some things in his heart. And prayer sometimes will do just that. And all you, instead of you being in you, you will get out of you so you can be in him. Are y'all here? Praise the Lord. Sometimes you have to get settled with where you are positionally before you can go to the place that God wants you to go eternally. Are y'all here, church? And see, a lot of times in our lives, we don't want to get settled with God, and therefore we can't go to the place that God wants us to go. Are y'all here, church? Amen. And so the Bible said, church, the Bible said there that Jesus, somebody say Jesus. Jesus. When he was about to go to Golgotha's hill, the Bible said he had to go to the place where they considered it the, 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 the wine press. He had to be pressed out in order for him to be pressed in. And sometimes in our lives, God will press some things out of us in order for him to press some things in us. Are y'all here, church? Amen. And so he was at the, this place where they had the olives, amen, where we get our olive oil, amen. And so God then, he began to become a little indifferent about this place in life that he was. Although he was both human as well as divine, you understand, I don't care how it is, amen, in your life, how spiritual you are. Knowing that you're about to leave your loved ones and your friends and your family members, amen. This man here by the name of Jesus, praise the Lord. Being that he was both human and divine, the Bible says he began, amen, aching, if you will. And saying, Lord, if it be possible, let this cup be removed from me. The Lord God himself, being that he's the spirit of God, he was not hearing it because he had, amen, a mission in, amen, mind before Jesus even entered the earth, amen. The Bible says that he came not to do his own will, but to do the will of him that sent him. In other words, Jesus in his humanity had nothing to do with God in his divinity. Are y'all here at church? Praise the Lord. And see, a lot of times in our lives, we don't know what God is up to, but because God is God, God says, I'm going to press out of you what I want out of you, humanly speaking, and I'm going to get out of you, spiritually speaking, because I have a mandate for your life. Are y'all here to pray the Lord? And so now he goes to him not just one time, but church, he goes to him a second time. Some might say two times. He goes to him a second time and says, Lord, if it be possible, let this cup pass away from me. God said, I'm not going to remove anything. It's kind of like the Apostle Paul. Paul said, I went before God three times, and he still would not take the thorn out of my side. Why y'all here? Praise the Lord. That's a God that we serve. And see, a lot of times in our lives, because we do not understand how powerful God is, God said, it's not about the limited amount of power you have. It's about the I possess. When y'all hear, praise the Lord. So I say, prayer will change things in my life. Glory to God. And so in this time, church, here it is, Gina going to the man, the master. One more time, not one time, three times, he goes knocking on God's door. He said, Master, if it be possible, I'm tired of carrying this weight on my shoulder. I'm tired of, amen, thinking about what I'm about to face. I'm tired of even thinking about the whips that's going to cross my back. I'm tired of thinking about the crown of thorns that's going to be placed on my head. I'm tired of thinking about the nail prints that's going to be on my hands. If it be possible, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, not my will, but let thy will be done. 
was talking about the power of prayer. See, there is something about prayer. God tells each of us, church, that we are going to pray secretly so that we can be rewarded openly. You can always tell a praying man that prays in the secret because something Oh, God. 
Something is right. So rectify me. Yes, sir. And restore me. Because see, after restoration takes place, didn't I have rights to go into the throne with boldness? A God in church that understands that even in the midst of wrongness, you still see fit to make me right. You still see fit to change my mind and to change my attitude and give me what I need. That's because you went through proper protocol. Me. See, you can tell people that don't reverence God, they don't reverence leadership. They don't respect God, they don't respect leadership. They won't respect mama, they won't respect daddy. They won't respect, respect authority figures, they won't respect teachers. They don't respect principles. They don't reverence. See, this down here is the teaching ground. The teaching how to really approach God. You see, as parents stop teaching their children, training their children up, then because of that, they don't know the way up. See, when you learn to reverence See, think about it. He's holy. Amen. Jesus called these disciples and these men evil men. Amen. Because in comparison to his holiness, filthiness, rags, bloody, messed up. In comparison to his holiness, but me, even in my humanity, if I can approach his divinity properly, in the right place with God because he is God I'm his creature so he says forgive us our sins for we also forgive everyone who sins against us lead us not into temptation rectify me restore me back to the place that you want me to be. See, David prayed, create in me a clean